talking about the newly announced Canon T6i and T6s. Now, for those of you outside of North America, the 750D that has been listed in all the rumors is the T6i. The 760D is the T6s. I've come up with a quick bottom line or summary for the T6i, and that is it, it represents an upgrade to the T5i. It is, here's the T5i right here, it is in every respect a very similar camera with some slight improvements as we often see when we get the next newest model. The T6s though, it's a little more interesting. And I think, to put it simply, if these two were to have a love child, you would get a T6s out of it. Now, we're gonna talk about what that means in just a second, but it's really, pretty powerful what we're getting from the T6s now. Let's look at the similarities that the T6i and the T6s share. We're gonna split this up into two screens here. I didn't realize that I put animation on it. I didn't mean to do that, only part of it. There we go, okay. 24 megapixel sensor, nice upgrade. Interesting that it's not the same sensor that came out in the 7D Mark II, really not so long ago. 19 point cross type 19 point autofocus, all of them cross type. That is in both the T6i and the T6s. And that is the same as the 70D. And that is a very capable focusing system. Very nice. Maybe not an amazing spread across, but the fact that we do get 19 and they're all cross type is great. ISO 100 to 12,800, expandable to 25,600. I don't expect any amazing ISO performance improvements over previous models. There's gonna be some improvement, but it's nothing that's going to be jaw-dropping and that you're going to want to immediately shell out all of your money for if you have the T5i. But there are other reasons why you might want to upgrade, and we'll talk about that in a second. Both offer five frames per second shooting. Uh, and a hybrid CMOS AF3 focusing system. Now, this is not the same as the dual pixel autofocus that is in the 70D, so that's a fairly big distinction between these new two new cameras and the 70D and the 7D Mark II. But Canon says that that new version three of the hybrid CMOS sensor is almost as good as the dual pixel autofocus. We need to see how much almost is. Oh, and we also get 1080p video, full HD, Canon calls it, but what Canon calls full HD is limited at 30 frames a second. There is not 60 frames at 1080 in these cameras. Next slide of similarities. They both share a three inch uh, touch screen articulating. Again, very similar to the T5i in that respect. They both have Wi-Fi and NFC. This makes them compatible with that nifty little base station, which is kind of a all in one, both camera image slurper takes the images off and also stores them on that hard drive and shares them out with your family. It's got the flicker detection, which is in the 7D Mark II. What that means is when you're shooting in conditions where you have fluorescent lights that are vibrating at certain frequencies, the camera will detect that and minutely, dis um, what do you call it, uh, delay the shutter to make sure that you're getting a cons more consistent image from shot to shot and not a delay that would be annoying to you, a delay that is not perceptible, just enough to battle that flicker. They both are gonna offer silent shooting modes, nice. And they both are basically the same size, weight, shape, offer the same battery life. Now, the T6S is about 10 grams heavier, so I'm gonna call that about the same. We take a look at them side by side, you can immediately see the big difference between the T6S and the T6i. Again, the T6i looks very similar to the T5i with just a couple button movements. Uh, the display button has changed positions. The T6S, however, offers that top LCD screen that you get on the 70D and higher end cameras. How nice is that? How important is that? Well, you know, it really depends on the type of shooting you do, but for me personally, it is really nice to be able to look down at my camera at a glance and see what settings I am and make changes to those settings that I can see as I bring the camera up to my eye in anticipation of the scene or the shot that I'm about to take. It's nice. And there's other information there as well uh, that, that can be helpful in, in using the camera. Let's move on to Oh, I mentioned the LCD, the fact that that is right there, that's a big difference. The other, of course, is the dial has moved to the left, but on the T6S as well, the dial is a locking dial. So again, how important is that? I have that on the 70D, it's not on the T5i. 
Occasionally, on a camera without a locking dial, I might bump the dial and move it to a mode that I don't um, want to be in. The locking dial, of course, allows me to stay in the mode I want to stay in. It's nice. It's not a huge feature. All right, now looking at the back of these two cameras, a lot of similarities again, but I want to draw your attention first to the fact that the T6S is the first in the Rebel line that is offering a command dial on the back. This gives you full manual control. Wait, you say, don't you already have manual control in the Rebels? Yeah, of course you can adjust aperture and shutter speed, but when you're shooting in manual on the T5i or the T6i, you need to hold down the little AV button to turn the dial, that adjusts your aperture. When you're not holding it down, you're adjusting your shutter speed. Now on the T6S, it is much more like the 70D. Shutter speed, aperture. Uh, or you can flip those back and forth depending on however you want to set that up. Now, that is really useful for shooting in manual, so you don't have to remember to push the button. You finger it doesn't accidentally slip off the button and suddenly you're changing a different setting. That's pretty rare that that happens, but it happens. Uh, and I also want to draw your attention to this little spot right below the viewfinder. The T6S is going to have a proximity sensor. So when you bring your face or your eye up to the viewfinder, it's going to turn off the LCD screen on the back. The T6i is not offering that, and that's why you saw that extra little display button on top. You're going to have to turn that on and off yourself. A big deal? No. But uh, probably the T6S is going to save some battery life a little bit. And the switch that shows you on, off, and full video modes on the T6S hint towards some more differences that I want to get into right now. So let's talk about some advantages. We just looked at some advantages of the T6S. Now let's talk about what it offers. There we go. So we got the top LCD. Pretty self-explanatory. I think I covered that. The rear command dial, better control and manual mode. The proximity sensor I mentioned. T6S is also going to offer AF servo and live mode. That means that when you're shooting in a continuous mode in live view, not video, but stills, it's going to autofocus in between those shots. The T6I is not going to offer that. Manual movie mode. Now, I've seen this in a couple of different places. I'm a, a little surprised, a little disappointed, but what this is saying and what people are saying is that in the T6I, you are not going to have full manual control while shooting video over your shutter speed and your aperture and your ISO, of course. On the T6S, you will. So that is a difference from the T5i, or a downgrade, if you will, to the T6i, because you do have full manual control shooting video with the T5i. I'm going to put a little asterisk there. I want you to put a little asterisk there, because until I get this confirmed from a couple more sources, I don't want to say it is absolute fact. But I've heard it from some pretty reliable places. so. I put it on the list for now. T6S is also going to offer a horizontal guide, a digital guide that you can tell whether or not you're shooting level, digital zoom during video, and HDR movie mode. Interesting. Gimmicky? I'm not sure. We'll see. Magic Lantern offers a very powerful HDR movie mode uh, that you can use in lower models, but it is uh, not so friendly to always work with, and then post-processing is difficult, so this will be tricky. Kind of a sun, fun side note, both cameras will offer miniature movie mode, which is something that Nikon's been offering for years. Those were the advantages of the T6S. The advantage of the T6i really is to save yourself $100. Is it worth it? I don't think so. Uh, I, I usually am all for saying spend a little less on a body and put that money towards glass because that's where you're going to really see the differences, but the T6S has a couple of those features, namely the rear dial, the top LCD, that make a significant difference in shooting, especially if you want to grow as a photographer. It is worth that extra little investment to get those features. Now, a little too early to say for sure, but let's talk a little bit about, well, you know, when people start to look at the T6S, it looks an awful lot like the 70D. So which camera should I buy when you're starting to compare those? Well, first question we need to answer is, if you're going to be shooting in live view a lot and you want to use autofocus, we need to know how fast is that hybrid CMOS AF3 system? How fast really is it? And how does it compare to the dual pixel AF of the 70D, which is very fast and very smooth and very capable. Continue to be impressed of that. Sensor improvements, we've got 24 megapixels in the T6S. 
22 in the 70D. Again, you know, one, that number is a very small difference, and two, I expect to not see huge differences. So, you know, one is not going to be greatly better in image quality than the other. But the 70D does certainly still have some strengths over this T6S. Namely, it is weather sealed, or at least more weather sealed. Seven frames per second versus five. You've got your different raw image file sizes. You have a pentaprism viewfinder in here, which just means a little bit brighter, a little bit better coverage, a little bit easier to see through than your pentamir prism, or sorry, your pentamir and your T6i, T6s. One eight thousandth of a second top shutter speed versus one four thousand in the T6i, T6s. 101 over 250 for your flash sync speed. It's just 200 on the Rebels, the T6i, T6s. And you get double the battery life. So you get about 900 and some odd shots out of the 70D. You're going to get about 440 shots, according to SIPA, out of the T6i, T6s. The 70D costs $250 more. So I, at this point, I'm not going to say that you should do that. It really depends on the type of photography that you're going to do. One other advantage of the T6s is it is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. It depends. You're going to have to weigh those things. And of course, I will be matching these up side by side as soon as I get my review unit um, and have lots more to share with you. So these are really quick thoughts and a rundown of the similarities and differences between the T6i, the T6s, and a little bit in comparison to, compar comparison to the 70D. If you appreciated this video, easy way to thank me is to click the thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, please take a moment and do that. I've got lots more videos coming on all sorts of topics, including what is the best camera for you over the next couple of months as we get more releases and put this side by side with the D5500. We should hear about the D7200 soon. Lots of great stuff coming, as well as tons of photography tips, how-tos, and just general fun information. If you're watching this on the Friday that it's announced, that it's released, Christina and I will be sitting down this evening, a live podcast at 5.30 p.m. EST, right here in this little room. Come join us. We'll be talking more about these two cameras. We'll also be talking a lot more about the Canon 5DS and 5DSR, also officially announced yesterday. I already have a video out about those back from when the rumors and I'm going to leave that for now and not do another video about it because I covered it pretty well in there and there aren't any more surprises. I'll just say that if you were looking for the 5D Mark IV, this is those cameras, the 5DS and 5DR, SR are not the 5D Mark IV. They are not a do-it-all camera. They are firmly targeted at photographers, not videographers, uh, and really have even removed some features that make the 5D Mark III useful for video. So we'll talk more about that. So you should subscribe. You should come back this evening, watch, ask questions. We answer them live. And if you're really serious about supporting my work here and what I do, this is my full-time job, I would invite you to take a moment and pop over to my Patreon page where I'm running a campaign where you can support my work through monthly reoccurring donations. What do you get? You get channel improvements and lots of personal perks and rewards. So take a moment. Look at that right there. Links for all of this information along with the supporting slides you just saw and a write-up on my site are all right down below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.